Today on The Hangout, nine years of the DeRozan era comes to a close in Canada. And we talk about what's LeBron doing in Los Angeles and what dance is he doing in Vegas? Plus, Carmelo Anthony continues to search for his return to NBA relevance. Hangout! Basketball fans, welcome into this very special Midsummer Nights edition of The Hangout. My name is Akil Augustine. I got to give all due credit for that quote to my co host, my friend, the guy who bookends the couches for me, Dad Glavin, producer of the Toronto Raptors broadcast. And we'll get your reactions to the big news in a little bit, but I got to introduce the rest of the panel. Okay, this guy, um, longtime content creator in Canada and also a really good coach. Over at Sheridan College, this is my guy Nikki Davis back for another one. How you living? I'm living well, thank you. Glad to be here. I heard they're going to shut down AAU, so you won't be doing too much in your summers. So that's going to be interesting. We'll <laughs> have be, you for more. It'll be good, actually. <laughs> I'll get to rest for one summer. It'll be great. All right, and uh, a good friend of the show, filmmaker, general guy who goes to the barber shop and tells the barber to mess me up. Yep. <laughs> Evan Reese. Yes. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm all right. Can't complain. Now let's talk about it. Here's the big news, and I'll start with you, Dan. Are you more surprised that Kawhi is coming or disappointed that DeMar is going? I mean, I guess I'm surprised. Yeah. But I'm mostly thrilled at the opportunity that the Toronto Raptors have created for themselves. They've gone out and got, at worst, one of the five best players in basketball. At worst? At worst. At worst. I mean, th this, this top is three. a top a top NBA Four talent. The ceiling now. He's right. almost been MVP before he's been MVP of the finals. And yeah, there, there's an emotional attachment to De DeMar DeRozan. He's done as much or more for the franchise as anybody had before him. Mm. And he was, you know, he was a key part of the, the culture of Toronto, of what we are. He was part of We the North. But when you look at it from a pure basketball standpoint, yeah, it's a, it's a bit surprising and it's a lot awesome. Yeah, well, the, the, the big challenge with that, of course, is you're, You've given up a guy whose heart bleeds Toronto. Yeah. And you're, and you're, and you're going to take someone who you're not sure you're going to be able to resign him. There's no evidence or, well, none so far that you're going to resign him. And, and for the city of Toronto, yeah, I mean, there's something about um, wanting to be here. And I don't know if Kawhi wants to be here or if he's here because he has no choice at the current time. So you're, so you're disappointed? Well, I, I love this point. I, I'm with, I, I, I hear Dan saying, like, this is an incredible talent. And from a talent point of view, it's a serious upgrade for the Raptors. Yeah. Like, from a, from a talent point of view. But... There's just something about the way it was handled and, and mm. what's the expectations coming down the road that, that I'm a little no bit uneasy about it. On winning and losing. I know well, it might though. Not. It absolutely might because the other players have to buy into well, it does. Once we, the games start, this stuff that happened in the offseason is no one's even gonna talk about well, it. See, I, I, I may disagree with that, but jump in, Evan. I mean that's the thing. It's a huge risk, but ultimately had to do it. People catch feelings, players move on. Messiah is still Danny Ainge light. Like, this is not as bad. <laughs> this is still good. Great deal. He's rolling the dice. This is the best Raptors team, I think Dan would agree with me, talent-wise, on paper that yeah. they've had so but far. But you know what? I I, on paper, I don't disagree with either of you. On paper, it is actually the best thing to do because how do you turn down the opportunity you to can't. get Kawhi you, you can't turn that down. But there is something about the impact on the locker room and how that may have. Like, people like DeRozan. They, they worked hard for him. They played hard for him. They did all these things for him. And if you don't think this guy's going to be with you the rest of the way, are you going to work as hard for him? Are you going to play? I mean, I know you're pros. You are. Once the game starts. I, I know yeah. it's easy to say, but it's another thing to, to see and feel. I mean, okay, and, and, yeah. and the, something that's completely different to see and feel is um, a situation where Kawhi opts in. We know the Raptors have the bird rights to yeah. the trade, so they have more money on the table. But, yeah. Evan, what situation do you think needs to play out for the Toronto Raptors to re-sign? Uh, he just, honestly, it's... He's been there. He's been in the finals. He's gotten finals MVP. He knows winning, and he left that winning culture. So I don't think winning is necessarily it for him because he left that behind. Okay. They need to at least reach the Eastern Conference Finals. But did he think he had a chance to win against Golden State with the collection of players that the Spurs had? No, but I think he had a better chance there than he does here. Does the East not change the Eastern Conference in a consistent trip to the finals like LeBron? It, it does, and I think right now they're probably second best team in the East. I would put them just behind Boston. Again, we haven't seen them at full strength. We haven't seen the Raptors at full strength with Kawhi. So I don't know. I feel like he needs to have a good campaign. Uh, the Raptors have uh, inherited an uncharismatic, enigmatic player. <laughs>
replacing another one like Demar, you know, and, and it's just like <laughs> I, I, I got to disagree. I, I think winning is going to have everything to do with his decision to re-sign it. If they get to the conference finals, if they yeah. get to the NBA finals, I think it's going to be very difficult for him in that scenario to to leave, especially if the job isn't done. Sure, but and but also then Toronto. It, Toronto works its magic on, on people who live here, who who are unsuspecting, and they come here and they There's fall in love with the city. Apps, and it's easy to fall in love with the city. Nikki, let, me, yeah. let me throw this at you yeah. before you give your response. He left some money on the table. 80 million. Left San Antonio. 80 million. Because they had the right for the well, city. Well, he's not motivated by money. Oh, no, wait. And if he leaves Toronto, he's leaving the bird rights money on the table, too. Right. But I don't think he's a motivated by money guy at this point in his career. I just don't think he is. Now, he maybe his agents are, and maybe the, his handlers are, and his, and his uncle. Maybe they're motivated by money. Yeah. But I don't think he is. And I, and I do think that there's a real opportunity here for Toronto to win him over. And I think he could be won over. He seems like the kind of person who could fall in love with the city of Toronto real easy. And if that happens, it's going to be difficult for him to leave. And I think I would love to see a screenshot of Masai's face when Paul George re-signed in Oklahoma, Ooh. ding, like yeah. that had to have happened, yeah. right? All right, well, right now ESPN has the Toronto Raptors competing for an NBA championship this season. You guys buying or selling on that? I'll start with you, Dan. Of course I'm buying it. I mean, I absolutely think, look, if you're doing the power rankings of the East, yeah, Boston's going to be tough. They're right there, one, two. Philly? No, I don't think I don't think Philly's ready for prime time yet. They're, they would be a tough playoff out, but the, the two favorites in the East are Toronto, Boston. They have the depth, the talent, um, they have the experience, especially the Raptors. It's you know, DeRozan's gone, but most of these guys have been in the playoffs five straight years. Yep. I think the Raptors could win the East this year, and with Ka uh, Kawhi on the floor, he, I think they could give Golden State an issue. But that's the Toronto Homer in me saying that. Yeah. Qu quickly, is he the best player of the Eastern Conference, Kawhi Leonard? Because you got Joel, you got Kyrie. I think he's absolutely the best player in the Eastern Conference. Absolutely. I think he's absolutely Without the best player. Without having seen him play for 80, I, I don't care. I, I think, I don't care. Like, he, I have to base it on the last time I saw him play a full season, and he's absolutely the best player in the Eastern Conference. All right, Evan, how does this trade impact the other half of uh, one of the most uh, loving friendships in the NBA right now, Kyle Lowry? I think Kyle Lowry will benefit from it because not only – is Kyle already a good defensive player, but you're now getting the best defensive player in the league. It's going to hammer down their defense, which was already great. The perimeter defense. Exactly. I feel like with their lineup, if they have those guys out there with Pascal and OG, those guys on D, it's going to be phenomenal. And I think Kyle will benefit and really lock down and probably be an all-star once again. Can I just say one thing about Dan's comment about when you said it? Yeah, cuss down. No, 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 it's not cuss I think I think Dan makes a really good point around uh, about the whole thing around how good the Raptors are in terms of the other teams in the Eastern Conference. And you know what? The Raptors bench, let's not forget, they have one of the best benches Deep. in the entire East. And that bench has not changed. Like, it's, it's the same bench. So all you've really substituted is DeMar DeRozan. Well, they're right? going to the best, they're gonna the best. OG to the bench yeah, now. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So you, to me, you've actually strengthened the team in a real yeah. in, a, in a real measurable way. My only thing is chemistry. How does the team chemistry play out? And part of that has to do with his relationship with Kyle Lowry. I, I'll, I'll throw this out there, though. I think one of the reasons why the bench has been such a hot-button topic for this Toronto Raptors team is because the starters have had such a hard time in the – in the yeah. playoffs, Absolutely. Yeah. and that's kind of been like a misdirection for me personally. Yeah, yeah I hear. I don't you. want to put too much emphasis on the bench. Your guys need to be. I hear guys. you, but they did. They did do well all year long. Yep. <laughs> like they were fantastic all year long. But well, Dan, you you never got a chance to, to follow up on this Kyle Lowry question because this is Kyle Lowry guy is a guy who took a while to warm up to the concept of being a Raptor, and then a lot of the love for the Raptors for him was his relationship with Demar. I mean, yeah, the, and the relationship was a great part of of what was going on. But I mean. Now he gets to have a strong working relationship with Kawhi Leonard, and even Kyle Lowry would have to accept, as, as we're all saying here, mm -hmm. and is the consensus that as good a player as DeMar DeRozan is, mm -hmm. Kawhi Leonard's a little bit better. Now this gives Kyle Lowry a chance to really compete for an NBA title. That has to be the goal. He's got two years left on his contract. Yep. How do you think it would look for Kyle if in two years he's had another two great years, maybe a trip or two mm -hmm. to the NBA Finals, I think this is an opportunity for Kyle's career and to possibly get even another big contract. Nikki, how different do you feel about the Nick Nurse coaching hire now that you have Kawhi Leonard in there to play with him? Well, I don't think it changes the way I feel about it. I feel the same way about it. I'm, to me, he, I'm, he's unproven to me. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I don't know how it changes mm. the philosophy of the team because he's been under 
uh, he's been under he's been with the team for quite a while and I think his and if he was the offensive genius of the team last year or the offensive let's not say genius but offensive coordinator <laughs> mm -hmm. of the Raptors last year I thought that was one of the bigger problems is their their lack of creativity offensively so yeah. well, hopefully, there was some resistance between him and Dwayne oh, yeah, no, and I don't debate ideas. that so let's see hopefully with, with him running the show and he gets to maybe call his own shot some more I'll see some more but I, I'm not completely sold that he was the right choice yet but I'm willing to give it a Your try. Your top five offense in the league weren't yeah. they? Yep. The yes season. they were. All right, okay. wait, wait, but wait, look wait. what happened in the playoffs. Yeah. We've been talking for quite some LeBron time. Happened. I think the commercials <laughs> want their time. So we got to go to break. Still more to come here in Canada's home for talking hoops. This is the hangout. LeBron James. Is that Prince? Rest in peace to Prince. Nope. That's your boy doing his best Prince of Purple Nation, Brandon Ingram. And LeBron doing that. We'll be back. <laughs> hangout!